So a lot of the times we love to show our plants that are beautiful and lush and perfect and the leaves are just great. But obviously, truth be told, that is not the reality all the time. So I wanted to share with you guys all the plants that I've killed in 2022. So I have what I believe to be a complete list of all the plants that I've killed in 2022. But, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm missing a couple but this is what I can recall. The first plant is going to be my Macold Patola. And this one had a very short life in my care. The picture that I have, I think actually it's a video clip that I have on the screen. It's from early August when I first got it. And it was right before I did my um, underrated plants video for you guys. And it was so gorgeous. Actually, I think you guys first saw it in the unboxing of my, um, what's that company we love plants and it was so cute the leaves are gorgeous of course that striking like lightning pattern that everyone loves it even had a little new um a little new new growth on it and so i'm like oh this looks good it has a new growth it's gonna be okay even though i had no idea how to take care of jewel orchids i just figured you know you know i actually did want to put it in a terrarium but i didn't move fast enough i just had it in my um mini greenhouse no in my ikea cabinet thinking that you know it would be okay and it was not uh, very shortly after probably less than a week it rotted at the base and you know all I did was okay so the way it rotted at the base like literally right where the soil meets the stem is where it rotted so it looked like it still had a node on it or like an area where it could reroot so I literally just moved it over <laughs> in the soil and put it back in the soil and just kind of sprayed it a little bit hoping that it would reroot and I want to say that it maybe was doing okay because I remember it putting out a leaf and so I think it was trying to get itself together but by the end of August it was done you can see in the picture here it completely dried up so I think it was making a comeback but I wasn't keeping it moist enough because as you can see in the picture it is super crispy and super dry and yeah I probably at that point when it rotted I should have just put it in my prop box and maybe it would have made a comeback but it died very quickly I want to say less than two weeks and it was a goner I do apologize if the audio is not as great in this video. I have I have a new setup and I'm still learning everything, so it's a work in progress. Anywho, the next plant, which <sighs> I really am sad to talk about this plant because it was a gift to me from my cousin. My cousin gave me a sunflower that was beautiful. Sunflowers, if you guys don't know, I do love fresh flowers. Like we always buy like fresh cut flowers and we keep them in a vase in our house like every one to two weeks we'll buy fresh flowers and i love sunflowers so having a sunflower plant to me was just the best thing ever because like i can always have my fresh cut sunflowers and i killed it no i did i okay here's the story i probably put on the screen here the original plant that my cousin gave me she gave it to me right before i left for um to move to texas as a gift and it was beautiful now i did have it outside and it actually didn't do that well outside and I thought it's a sunflower it should do fine outside but there was some type of heat wave it wasn't doing okay fine fast forward to being in Texas again the heat wave was kicking its butt fine I was working on that trying to water it as regularly as possible not a big deal but what took this plant down was the spider mites like it was in and I don't remember who I was asking or talking to about it, but they were saying that sunflowers are notorious for spider mites. And this was before my neem oil days. So I was just, I literally went through like one and a half bottles of dead bug brew and showering it. And it was literally like, like the, it, you can see from the picture, the leaves were a small sunflower. Like it wasn't a huge sunflower plant, right? So where the small little sunflower was connected to the stem, it was literally be a cobweb, like covered, complete white cast covered in spider mites and in the webs. And I was just like, I did, I tried. I really tried to fight the battle. Like every week or a couple of days, I was spraying this thing down and it would come back in droves. Like it was so bad and it was I I lost the battle I lost the battle like and it was putting out new flowers and new leaves even through all of this but eventually it just it it really started to give up and I couldn't see it you know struggle like that anymore and I just I couldn't take it anymore it was so bad and I had to throw it out I'm sorry I really do miss that sunflower I think it would have done so well if I could have just figured out like 
I don't know that and then I think what um someone was telling me about it is like because it's an outdoor plant it really does better outdoors when it comes to pests and things because it's just prone to that and I honestly don't know if Nima could have fixed it guys I really and I strongly believe in Nima and I really don't even think it could have fixed it but that was the really sad demise of my sunflower plant I'm sorry the next plant is my elephant ear, my Colocasia elephant ear, and I really love that plant. I'll put up on the screen here a reel that I made. This is from early, this is from mid-May, this reel, but I got the plant probably a few months before that as a bulb. It was the first plant that I grew from a bulb, so I was so excited about it. I think I featured it in my sad plants, and I was learning about how the roots and the tubers and all of that come out because I unpotted it like it was just a really fun experience growing this thing and it was beautiful you know it was so beautiful and so I think the next clip that I have up there is right before I packed it up in the end of May before I moved and the leaves were a beautiful huge size and then in July I believe I show it again where I think it was either part of my moving vlog or maybe I don't remember the point is that the clip is from July and it was starting to struggle. It was really starting to struggle in this Texas heat. The leaves were burning all the time. It would be distressed from the heat because I wasn't keeping up with watering it because it wasn't in a clear container. It was in a net, like a nursery, a big like gallon nursery pot inside of a, a bucket that was like a green color. And so I didn't see immediately when it needed water and the leaves would just be like limped over like it was it was hard the balance of the transition for me with caring for it here was hard because it already loves water and then here it just it was really much a struggle and the leaves were burning left and right and then again it had the same demise as the sunflower those on spider mice like it was that was really infested too like that was so infested i don't know if i caught it in the clip but i saw it when i looked at the clip in the center where the sinus is of the leaves like it was a complete white cast on there because the amount of spider mites that was on those leaves like and on the backs of the leaves like it was bad it was so i remember what got me and why i ended up throwing it out was because if you see i think i showed there was one leaf that was furled up it was the newest leaf it wasn't unfurled yet I opened it to see and I almost threw the plant. There was so much inside the front of it. And I honestly, looking back now, I'm wondering if maybe it was also thrips because I saw little black dots along with this, the webbing and the white of the spider mites. And I'm like, and at one point I was like, is this spider, spider mite poop or is this something else? And so I'm like, is this thrips? Like now when I'm thinking about it, I think maybe it was thrips, but it was so disgusting. When I unfurled that leaf, I said, I'm done. And I threw it out because it was just, I, I could have probably saved it by cutting it all the way down, but I was so disgusted that I just couldn't. So I guess I technically, it didn't really die. I just, I don't know, I guess I murdered it. I don't know, I couldn't take it anymore. It was, so bad so this next plant was a wishless plant for me i really wanted to get into carnivorous plants so i at one time had a pitcher plant i don't even think i got to share it with you guys on my channel here i think i briefly might have posted it on a story on instagram but um i got it from a local planty person and when i think about it now i think that was the first plant that i ever had in fluval i didn't even recognize what it was because i hadn't used fluval at that time but looking back now i'm thinking i think that plant was planted in fluval but Anyways, it looked fine. It was good. And the girl, she did say to only um, water with distilled water. Did I listen? <laughs> no. I listened for like maybe the one, maybe the first two days I listened to that. And I was like, I'm not buying distilled water for this plant. Like we had happened to have a jug of distilled water in the house. But I was just not going to keep doing that, you know. And she said it needed a lot of light. So I put it in my in the windowsill of my um, sunroom. And if you don't know, the windows in my apartment are southwest facing windows. And we are in a high rise on the 12th floor and there are no buildings in front of our windows. So when that sun comes in, it beats down. So I think I was like a couple days too late 
unwatering it and it just was a crisp but i think i have the picture up you guys can see this is from september so it didn't last long it lasted one month <laughs> in my care before it became a crisp and i have a friend who um she knows a lot about carnivorous plants so i sent her the picture and i'm like do you think it was the distilled water or was it just because i underwatered it and she was like it's not because of the distilled water like it could you know act a little different because of that but i think you just you didn't water it <laughs> enough that's from it not being watered so yeah it it i i, I underwatered it you guys know i'm an underwater like and the fact that it was sitting on the window still getting that constant sun and i didn't water it it was a goner it was truly a goner i am going to try again though because i just think pitcher plants and carnivorous plants in general are really cool so this next plant i think is the shortest living plant in my care in all of my history of having plants and that is my begonia rex i will have it on the screen here i acquired this i want to say august was it yeah early august um from a wish wednesday i forgot i think i wished for a um domino peace lily and she was like oh do you want anything else i said Ooh, how much and she's like oh i gave you for free i said oh of course sure thank you so kind you know so she had all of these like options to choose from and so i chose this cute little dark lovely little begonia and i said okay this begonia is probably gonna hold high humidity let me put it in my cabinet i left it in the moss i made sure the moss was moist that thing crisped up within two days okay within two days it completely gave up i'm like you didn't even give me a chance so I don't even know like if there was anything that I could have done to save that. Maybe if I had put it in a prop box first, but I didn't even get a chance. It only lasted two days in my care before it became nothing. So yeah, that's the end of that one. So this next one was a bit of an emotional one for me because I, again, this was back when I was um, still living in Pennsylvania and it was one of my first kind of uncommon plants. It was when I refused to spend money on a monster album and I discovered the variegated epipremnum panatum and I was like, this is it, it's gorgeous still. I don't gotta pay for no Monstera album. I can get my, you know, whatever. So I think, and I was being super cheap. So I think I only spent like 25, $30 for this tiny, tiny one leaf cutting. It was one leaf, but it had three nodes. And I was so afraid of killing it. So I chopped it into three, like, why would I do that? But I did. I chopped it into three and put them all in a prop box. And two, the only cutting that survived was the one that had a leaf. The other two eventually rotted away, potted it up. I think I have a picture. What's the picture that I put in here? Um, so that was early January when I first got it, the first picture that you guys saw. And now by mid-April, it was doing really good. That one leaf part of the cutting that survived put out like three or four new leaves and it was so gorgeous. It was this tiny little baby, but every leaf was beautiful, like some type of half moon or marbled effect. Like there was, it was a perfect um genetics that you would look for in a variegated plant right like it was gorgeous and so i think i posted it a couple of times on instagram because i was just so happy with it and then by late april i think yeah yeah because i remember saying oh my god i just posted about how much i love this plant and how well it's doing and then soon after that it died like it wasn't even like a slow death it was a quick death and i think what happened was I was growing it in perlite, regular perlite. This was before my chunky perlite days. I was growing it in regular perlite and it was doing perfectly fine. It, the roots had grown so much down into the perlite. I was like, okay, it's ready. Like it's ready to be potted up. And I put it into pond and I think I put it on a heat, I think I put it back on the heat mat and I should not have. And I don't know if I either like roasted it or if I like let it dry out and then try to water it. I don't know what it was, but I'm telling you within a few days of potting it into pond, it was a goner. Like it wasn't even like, oh, the leaves dropped and I can just reroot the node. No, there was nothing. It was a complete goner. I was so sad. Like, I remember just sitting there looking at the plant for a few minutes and my eye, like, my eye watered. It didn't drop, but it watered because I was so upset. Like, it just happened so quickly. And then, 
I don't know. It was just so sudden. That was a very sudden one for me. That was really hard. I do have a new very good Epi, but it's just not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself when you deal with these plants because like I have this new variegated epi, right? And I should be grateful and happy that I have it, but I still kind of avoid taking care of it. I don't know if it's because I feel like I'm gonna kill it the way that I did the other one. So it's literally, I don't know if you can see um, this back right there next to the macrophyllum, <laughs> there's a water, um, a vase with water and all my very good epi cuttings in them because I almost killed that one too. So it's like I refuse to pot it up and I refuse to touch it and deal with it because I'm scared I might kill it again. The next one that I killed was a elephant bush and I believe it's a type of succulent and I really would like to try again with this plant because I feel like I have a lot more knowledge now about how to take care of succulents but it was a trailing succulent. It was so cute. I got it from Home Depot and I remember I wanted one initially and then I was like, no, you know, be sensible. Don't buy every plant you see, you know, but then I saw it again later. I was like, I have to get it. It was just really lush and full and I think it kind of had that contrast of the green leaves with the kind of brownish orange stem and I really like that so it was okay at first it was nice and full I think this first picture here is from early G December when I first got it and then by January I didn't notice but as I'm looking back now I can tell that it was starting to look a little bit sparse so a month later it was I do remember saying like oh I feel like it's kind of dropping leaves a little bit but it was always putting out new leaves if you see those little like bright green areas it was always putting out new leaves so I was like I guess it's fine because it's always putting out new leaves but when I look back now seeing where I had the plant I had it next to my couch this was in my first apartment I had it next to my couch and the window was way over there and with this being a succulent I know now that it needed to be in the windowsill not way over there so and I was always kind of like, should I water it? Should I not? And I was like using the moisture meter and it didn't seem like it needed water because it's a second. Like, I just didn't understand, right? So, of course, a couple months later, by mid-March, I think there's a clip here from my video, The Plants I Don't Like, and you can see it was a goner. And I honestly, I'm pretty sure I had kind of given up on it by right before then because that video came out in March, but I want to say that... I might have recorded that like at the end of February, right at the time that I moved back home from my apartment, because I remember contemplating, do I want to take it with me? Like, or do I just want to leave it? You know, or I just want to trash it instead of moving with it. But I decided to take it with me, but I really should have just trashed it because soon after that, that's exactly what I did. Cause it was, it was gone. It was, there was nothing left. <laughs> it was a crisp and there was no like propagating to try to bring pieces back. It was just done. I definitely do think that I want to try again with that plant though, especially since we have our trailing jade, trailing jade that's doing so good. And I want to make, um, I'm still working on making a plant wall. I feel like that would be beautiful for that. So I'm going to look out for that again. I feel like I don't see it as much down here as I did up north. So this next plant is also technically from 2021, November, December time frame, but it's within like, it's within a year since I killed it. And that is my Tritoscanthia, some type of Tritoscanthia, a wandering dude. It had the purple and silver striping. It was actually really pretty. So I got this plant in late November. You can see um, here, this was like one of the first pictures I posted on my Instagram. And I got it as a gift from a friend. It was a little from rehab, but you know, she had found another one that she really liked. And so she's like, oh, do you want this one? I said, sure. I love free plants, you know. So it was already a full basket, but it had some sparse areas. So I remember kind of chopping it up a bit and trying to refill the sparse areas. Some of the parts took, some of them didn't, and they just brought it away. But it still became more full anyways. And then about a month later, I think I have another picture. You can kind of see it um, in the background, maybe. Is that the picture that I have? I'm not sure. But it was starting to look a little more sparse it was okay but it was just starting to look a little more sparse and then by january february again that was the time that i was moving from my apartment back to my mom's house and you can see that it's on the lower shelf like so i had this plant shelf and as i was acquiring more and more plants or more plants that i felt needed more light or more plants that i was more excited about that was try to scan the started moving lower and lower and lower on the plant shelf so it probably was not getting as much light as it really could have needed and so of course 
because of that, it just became more and more sparse so and crispy. I remember it being super crispy. So by the time I was ready to move back home in February, that was a plant that I was just like, I'm not taking this with me. Like, and it was hard to kind of maneuver when I was pop, pop <laughs> when I was packing up all the plants into the boxes and everything, it was just too cumbersome to mess with that plant. And so I was like, all right, I think it's time to let it go. And so I did. I think I did actually try to keep a cutting from it. I kept like a one, either one or two, like a little vine cutting and I had it in water and I did keep it for a little while, even after I moved back home, but it died. So yeah. So this next one, I don't think I got to show this on my channel either because it died so quickly. Actually, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. But anyways, it's a melanocrysum cutting. It was the very first melanocrysum that I ever got. And I got this in early February and the pictures that I've shown you guys is when I first got it, when I first unboxed it. And this was, again, when I was still new to like getting plants online and from people. I think this was one of the first like Facebook plant orders or things that I have ever, ever done and looking back now seeing those terrible black crispy aerial roots is like why did she even send that to me like that like the cutting well, could have been fine probably but why are you even keeping those scraggly aerial roots on there like <laughs> so that was just like I at the time when I received it I remember being like mm, this is weird but I don't you know what do I know you know so I was just worried about killing it so I think I had put it in moss and perlite or something like that I think that was my first time doing that combo of moss and perlite and it was just a slow downhill you know battle with that it really didn't do anything I think the next picture let me see the next picture that I have up there for you guys is the, the same month, late February, where it was starting to yellow and it just died soon after that. Like, I don't even think it made it to the end of February because I did have it for a short period of time after I moved back home, which was the end of February. And I want to say by the time I got my order from Green Spaces ID, which was, I believe, in March, that first melanocrysum was already gone <laughs> like it was already gone so yeah but when i look back i really don't think i think it was because those areas aerial roots were trash like i at the time like i said i didn't really recognize like why would they send me a plant with these terrible aerial roots of course there was like almost no chance and it wasn't that there was no chance that it could do well it was just that there's no chance that these aerial roots will produce anything <laughs> you know so it's like it should have just been chopped but i didn't know so yeah so this next one isn't one plant but a group of plants and i actually planned to do a whole entire video on this little experience but it just didn't go well and that was my mystery bulb box i think the first clip i'll show you guys is when i was initially planning to do the unboxing so i recorded it and this was in early february and there was a bunch of bulbs i believe i had 20 bulbs and my dumb behind didn't ask for her to label what they were i just remember seeing an instagram post of a bunch of different plants and flowers and saying this is what you could get and i said oh that's pretty i want it but then when i got the bulbs i had no idea what was what and i was like oh it's fine it'll be a mystery it'll be fun no it wasn't fun so i got them i potted them up the biggest mistake I probably made was using old soil. I used old soil because I was being cheap and lazy and I'm pretty sure that's what brought on the constant battle of pests that I had. So this next picture you'll see and was that later? I think that was still in February actually. This next picture that you see where there's these nasty little white bugs on there. That was a constant battle with these bulbs. So that was the first incidence of them and I would just, you know, get some cotton um, Q-tips and alcohol swabs and clean it off. But it was just, they would just keep coming back. And then I had some in perlite, which you can see in this next picture, which those ones, they never really got those um, white bugs on them, which I believe are aphids, I'm not sure. But that's what led me to believe that the problem was the soil, was because I reused the soil. So then the second picture, I think, is also from late February. And there was just, those were, I had different sizes. I had some small ones and I had some big ones. And I also had some corms too. So I, I had a bunch. There was, like I said, there was 20 of them. I potted them up a bunch together, but 
that's how they were looking at that time. And then, let's see, that was February. So a couple months later, by March, they actually started to show some signs of growth. And between that time, I was still not as bad, but I was still getting those nasty little possible aphids. So you can see here in April, they sprouted a lot and there was a lot of growth, but what was it? It just looked like, I don't know, scallions, onions. Like I didn't purchase vegetables, I purchased flowers. So I don't know what, I still to this day do not know what those bulbs are supposed to be. It grew, but as you can see, there was those nasty little white bugs again popping up on there. And this time it was, I'm getting, I'm itching because it's grossing me out thinking about it and thinking about like, <sighs> the white bugs came back and they came back with a vengeance. And I think I tried one more time because I unpotted it and it had so many roots. But when I unpotted it, I think I ended up breaking off a lot of the roots, I believe. And then I just put it into straight water because I'm like, okay, let me get it out of this nasty soil. Let me just put it in water. And it just continued to go downhill and eventually just completely rotted away and it became slimy and I was just done with it anyway. So yeah, still to this day, do not know what those bulbs were. All 20 of them were a goner at some point. And yeah, so the next one is my Philodendron Thai Sunrise. And I got this in a tray. So the clip I think I have is from mid-August from the when I did the plant trade. And I think I traded it for like a variegated epi cutting. And it was a one leaf, two leaf. It was a two leaf node. No, it was a one leaf, two node cutting. <laughs> and I honestly don't know why I brought it away. I feel like it could have did good, but you know, there is a chance that I may have given it away because I gave away Golden Goddess cuttings um, for Wish Wednesday. I sent someone some Golden Goddess cuttings and the Thai Sunrise note looks very similar to the Golden Goddess. And I remember being confused as to which one I was giving, but I think I might have chopped it into two separate nodes to kind of, you know, give me a double chance. But either way, I don't know where it is. I haven't seen it. So I'm assuming it died. <laughs> I have checked my prop boxes since then and I remember looking for it and being, I and I do remember at one point throwing out a node, but I couldn't remember if that was the Golden Goddess or if that was the Thai Sunrise. Either way, it's no longer here with us. Somebody might have it. Somebody might have it and be like, oh my God, wow, this is amazing. I don't know. Either way, I don't have it. So these last two plants, I actually kind of still have something to show for, but at this point, I'm really calling it a goner or a loss because it's not looking good. And the first one is my variegated million hearts, which I'm really sad about because I really, really like that plant. I love my green uh, million hearts. So I really love the variegated million hearts. It was the cutest thing. So this picture or a clip that I have up on the screen is from early October, I think from my houseplant tour video. And I got, so I got it a little bit before that video and it was so cute and lush and just gorgeous. I got it from Etsy. But if you remember the clip that I'm showing next is from late October and that is from my Hoya collection video. And I was talking about in that video how there was a slug in my plant. It was disgusting. So it took a while for me to handle it and to kind of like repot it and everything when I finally did. Like, I think I just, I think I assumed that I needed to care for it the same way I did my green one, which I feel like that's not wild to assume, but it... The green one, I can let dry out and it'll be fine. But also it's a more full established plant. So I don't know, I, I might have under and then over watered it. And so it just sprouted away. And so I'll show here from mid-November, I was trying to rescue it. I actually was planning on making a um, YouTube shorts about it. So that's what this clip is from, of me trying to chop and prop and rescue it. <sighs> I'll show you what it's looking like now. This is what it looks like now. <laughs> there is not much left in here. I took a bunch and actually I have some in a um, perlite prop box. This is what I put in Fubal. Um, the other, the only one that looks alive still, but it doesn't have any roots, is this one that I put in water. So this one actually still is very much alive, but what is this? like? What is this? I mean, granted the water is green and covered in algae, but is it mold? Is this a root? Like, 
Is this where the, I don't know. I have no idea. I kind of feel like this is an extension, and but then what is this? Like, I don't know guys. This is pretty much all I have left of it. Um, I do have some in a prop box, which I will get and then throw on the screen for you guys. And I'm pretty sure those are done too. So I thought that I really could like chop it and bring it back, but I just wasn't good at propping it, so I'm gonna get another one because I really, really like that plant. I'll definitely be getting another one. So the last and final plant that I recall killing <laughs> in 2022 was my Esmeralda and Scenario form that I got from Jasmina from Jasmina Lowe's channel. <sighs> okay, this is a two-parter, okay? I don't even think, I don't even have any pictures. Wow, I don't have any pictures from when I first got it from her. So I bought the narrow form for her and then she gifted me a wide form. And I killed that immediately. And it wasn't even like I killed it because I didn't care for it. Mine's done behind. She was like, oh, is it okay for me to ship it now? I said, yeah, ship it now. I'm, I went away. I went. I told her to ship it and then I went away like an idiot. So then of course it arrived and I wasn't here. So when I finally got here, got the plant, it was okay, but mine done behind. I think we got here, we got back home at like two, three o'clock in the morning. And so I'm trying to open it to get it out of the box and I'm delirious and I snapped it. I snapped the growth. I, I don't even know how it is. I snapped the leaf, but then it was right by the growth point. And so I tried to put it in a prop box to save it and, <sighs> First, I tried to just like prop it up in moss, but either way, I killed the white from cutting immediately, unfortunately. And then I, because I killed that one so quickly, I really tried to save my other. The other one started off good. I think I do have a video actually. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So the video, I'll put it on the screen, is from the My Sad Plants video that I did. Let me see, when is that from? That's from early August, that clip. And it has several leaves on it. It had several leaves, and I believe it had a one a much larger original leaf on it. But that one, for some reason, it died off pretty quickly, but it still has several leaves. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put it on a moss pole. I'm going to do this plant right, and it's going to make a comeback. <sighs> You know, I don't even know why it didn't make a comeback because, <coughs> excuse me, I had it potted in pine, I believe, and I put the moss pole on it. And I first had it with all my other climbing plants, but that area doesn't get direct sunlight, but I thought it would be okay but it wasn't okay so then i moved it closer to my window thinking it needs more light and it still wasn't okay and then i was like okay i don't know what you want from me so then i was left with one leaf and i said okay we're down to one leaf <laughs> so i put it into chunky perlite and put it in my ikea cabinet and now we're down to nothing i oops <laughs> I don't even know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I haven't pulled it out since, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing. Uh, I'm dropping chunky for that everywhere, yeah. This is literally what is left of it. I have no idea why this took such a turn for the worse. It started, then do you guys see, do you guys see in the clip, like it had so many new roots. It had so many new roots, but for whatever reason it rotted in pond. I probably should have put it in Lekka, which now I do. Now I put most of my philodendrons in Lekka instead of pond. At the time that wasn't recollecting with me. And I was just like, what's the problem? What's the problem? I should have just put it into pond instead of Lekka. I mean, Lekka instead of pond. And I didn't move fast enough. And this is what we're left with. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm sure there might be some plants that I haven't mentioned that I have killed but I just don't recall or that I subconsciously choose not to recall. I know there are several succulents that I probably have killed that I don't recall. Or maybe I gave them away right before I killed them. I don't know. The point is, killing plants happens. Not that I want to do it. It's not that we want to kill our plants. Sometimes it's really actually really upsetting when we kill certain plants because they have a really close like place in our heart. But... 
<sighs> such is life speaking of plants that i didn't recall killing i do now that i think about it recall killing a vaulted blue it refused to root for me and also a fuzzy patio there you go if i have any pictures i will place them up on the screen now i have also killed those plants because they were the fuzzy patio was an import that was just struggling forever and then the Baltic Blue was a cutting that I got that literally refused to root for me and I said I'm done with you. Actually I put it into um, Fluval as a one last stitch effort to save it and it, it didn't like it and it's no longer with us so yeah. You know, plants are a learning process and that's a part of the fun that we have with the hobby and don't ever feel ashamed if you kill a plant it our plants can't be great all the time, but if you'd like to see some amazing great plants, check out this Tropicals Plants pop-up shop that I went to.